Hello and welcome to Mount Olive Lutheran Church. This is the last of our Wednesday Advent services. It's not 7 p.m., but with the winter storm and blizzard approaching, we decided to have and record the service at noon. Uh, it is Vesper service, page 229. The opening hymn is 334, O Lord, How Shall I Meet You?
make haste, O God, to deliver me.
for joy when I sing praises to you, my soul also which you have redeemed.
reading from Romans chapter 6, where Paul writes, What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who die to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him, in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing, so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The response read for Advent. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch. single day. Every day we are called to put to death the old Adam in us through repentance so that a new man can be raised up in us. The new man that will live before God in righteousness and purity forever. Baptism joins us to Jesus Christ. It puts to death our sinful nature and raises up in us a new man. But there is a problem. And that old sinful nature doesn't go down easy. It keeps coming back. That's our experience. And we are also instructed about that in the scriptures. 
We are reminded that repentance is a daily experience. No matter how good our intentions are, we keep struggling. In Romans 6, Paul addresses the suggestion that some might make, well, if God loves to forgive sins and we'd like to sin, isn't that a good arrangement? By no means, Paul says. We, it's not that we should keep on sinning so that God can keep forgiving. Because Christ came to save us from sin. Jesus Christ died for us. The fact that we still have a sinful nature that keeps rearing its ugly head in our lives is why we need the gift that God gave and continues to give us in our baptism. Our baptism is not just a one-time thing in the past. It is an ongoing reality. And in fact, even that daily struggle and repentance leads us to recognize that a greater promise in baptism. It's not merely and only a daily new life we are experiencing for this world. It is also a promise and something that we can look forward to the eternal new life, the promise of the resurrection of our bodies in eternity, joined to Christ and like his resurrection body forever and sinless. Our struggles against sin, our struggles with daily repentance will indeed come to an end in eternity. Our bodies will be raised in that new way. And we ought to, even in this life, consider and reckon ourselves as dead to sin because of what Jesus Christ did and what it means for us to be connected to him now and also forever in eternity. In the liturgy of holy baptism, the first question asked of candidates for baptism is this. Do you renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways? The Christian life is a life in this world of war and battle. And yet we have tremendous weapons at our disposal. The devil is no joke. He's not a, a religious myth or a symbol of naughtiness. He's real and out to destroy us, to kill our faith, to kill our souls. And he does this by means of his main weapon, his lies. But Jesus Christ saves. And he gives us a new weapon, the weapon of truth. He saves us by connecting himself to our human nature and being born for us, and then by his dying and rising for us. And we are connected to that death and resurrection. We are saved by our baptismal connection to Jesus. We are baptized. In the face of the devil's temptation, we can remember and recall and consider that we have put on Christ that God has placed over us Christ's robe of righteousness, and that Satan li Satan's lies are just that, lies. We belong to God. We are his. It is just like the Father spoke about Jesus at his baptism. This is my beloved Son. That verdict is spoken over us as well in our baptism. We are God's child, beloved by him. Your baptism is a promise and seal that you are a Christian, that you stand before God with his full approval and blessing. And when you know where you stand before God, that empowers you, that enables you and gives you confidence in your life, even in this world. As Jesus said about his own baptism to John, it was to fulfill all righteousness and to fulfill all righteousness in you as well. This has to do with your daily life. Yes, God knows how you struggle to live the holy life that he has called you to. He knows the sins that you struggle with, pride and lust and malice and greed and coveting and gossip. But through God's promise in our baptism, we can know and have confidence in God's calling for us to live as righteous saints, clothed and covered over by his righteousness. Just as we sang in that hymn, in baptism we now put on Christ, our shame is fully covered with all that he once sacrificed and freely for us suffered. For here, the flood of his own blood now makes us holy, righteous, right and good before our Heavenly Father. So, use it well, this gift of baptism. Use it well. You are made new in Christ, a new creation, as faithful Christians live and do within your own vocation until that day when you possess his glorious robe of righteousness bestowed on you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all our human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. We rise for the name of God. O Emmanuel, our King and our Lord, be anointed for the nations and their Savior. 
Come and save us, O Lord our God. Lord God, maker of heaven and earth, 
and giver of life, we thank you for all the mercies you granted to our sister Ruby Hind and Joyce Dollar during their earthly lives, especially for calling them to faith in Jesus Christ. Comfort the survivors who mourn their deaths with the hope of the glorious resurrection and a joyful reunion in heaven. Keep us mindful that we are mortal, so that we will ever be prepared to die in the faith and finally receive the glory promised to all who trust in your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Direct us, Lord, in all our doings with your most gracious favor, and further us with your continual help, that in all our works, begun, continued, and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name, and finally, by your mercy, obtain eternal salvation through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord.